Today I want to talk about why I became a mystic. Why I believe that there's an intelligence behind everything. As I said in the last video, there's really no difference between mystical and non-mystical enlightenment. Um, it's all one. The difference being that whether that oneness has an intelligence behind it or not. When I fell through, when I dropped the personal self, or when the personal self dropped away, it'd be more accurate, I fell into what you would call typical enlightenment. It's all one, it's all awareness, there's no other. But soon things started to happen, and this is the, this is what, at first I resisted it, um, the implications of it, but I'll just tell you what basically, um, I, you know, I'd gone back to Florida after waking up, um, work fell on my lap again, and I started making money again, and soon I hit the road and uh, in my RV, and I sold my RV with the idea of getting a stealth camper. Stealth camper is, uh, was going to be a uh, a box truck that I could, that would look like a, like a moving truck, uh, but that I would have a camper inside so I could go anywhere. Apparently, though, that uh, she didn't want me doing that, her, the, uh, what you would call God. Um, I found one in uh, Virginia, and as soon as I saw it, I know this, I probably shouldn't do this, but I made the guy a deal anyway. I made a guy a lowball offer, and surprisingly, he took it. So, like a fool, I uh, went and bought it anyway, even though my gut said, don't do this. I had nothing but troubles with that truck. Long story short, though, is I made it all the way out to Oregon, all the way out to, actually, out to Washington State. And I was, I, I was, as I was going along, I was starting to think, well, you know, this isn't really my lifestyle for me living out of a, a truck, you know, even though I was making it comfortable. So I thought I would go ahead and find a place to live, you know, like in an apartment or something. I found Eugene, Oregon, and I found a nice little apartment, and I go over there with the truck, and as soon as I'm pulling in there, I hadn't, I hadn't bought it, I haven't even talked to the woman yet, I just saw the neighborhood, and uh, as soon as I'm pulling into that neighborhood uh, to check it out, the, the check engine light comes on and the transmission light comes on on the truck. Now, I've been having all sorts of troubles with this truck as, as, it, as, it, uh, as I'd had it, and I only had it about three months. But I said, oh, well, it's a good time then. It's a good time to go ahead and uh, get this apartment. This truck isn't going to last long, and if I had the apartment, I wouldn't gonna need it. I wasn't going to need it. Couldn't get the woman on the phone. I left a message, and so I said, well, okay, I'll go over to the, the mall. The mall is right next door, and uh, well, not next door, but, you know, about a mile or so away. And I, the truck started up. The lights came on, but it started fine. Make it to the mall. Figure I'd go get some lunch and hang out and see if she'd call so I could hurry up and get this apartment. I was excited about getting the apartment. She didn't call back. So then I got back in the truck, truck started up, lights came on, drove it back to the, the uh, hotel I was staying at. I pull in there, shut the truck off, and then I go to start it again, just to see, you know, if I was still gonna have any problems, nothing. Not even a click, just the key just turned, nothing. About an hour later, I hear I get a call from my mother saying she's got cancer and that they're gonna have to operate. This is the same kind of cancer that Steve Jobs had. So, in a weird sort of way, everything kind of worked out. The troubles with the truck, me getting fed up with it, getting all the way out there to Oregon, a place I thought, well, I'd like to live, but then not being able to get a hold of the woman uh, who uh, was renting the apartment, getting all the way back to the, the uh, hotel that I was staying at, and then the truck, truck dying there, then getting the call from my mother, and me knowing that I was going to have to travel all the way back to Florida and take care of her. I ended up donating in the truck to the food bank of uh, or uh, food bank of Lane County, and they uh, they appreciated that. I lost about five uh, fifteen thousand dollars on that deal, but it all worked out in the in the end run. I came back to Florida, took care of my mother, helped my sister move, and things all started working out because now I was, which I didn't realize this at the time, though things now now were working out because I was being selfless. I was helping others. Three months goes by, my mother's better. 
thought the, 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 the I thought the, the the cancer was all taken care of. I head back out on the road again this time in a little beat up Ford Escort, traveling the country looking for a place to settle down to live. Nothing felt right. For three months I was out there, and I was all over the country in that little Escort. Nothing felt right. Finally, I say, well, I traded the uh, Escort for a pickup truck, the pickup truck I have now, and uh, with the idea of getting either a, uh, a tow behind trailer, which is what I have now, but I didn't have then, or a slide in camper or a fifth wheel is the perfect truck for it. So I said, okay, I'll get that. And I'm looking around for something like that, and then I um, stumbled across this uh, guy's blog I follow, a guy named Glenn, and he had just found out that he had to go down to Florida with his mother had cancer, and I felt kind of a resonance with that. Um, but then the next day, of course, I find out that my mother needs a uh, chemo treatment. Uh, I thought it was all taken care of, but it turns out now she needs chemo treatment. So it worked out again. I didn't have this big RV that I had to tow around. I didn't have any, anything holding me down. I didn't, hadn't found an apartment or a place to live in those three months out there on the road. I head back to Florida, help take her, help her get through the chemo and everything. And it still hasn't quite registered on me. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, part of me says, yeah, this is her doing it, but it's almost like I'm not serious about it, her being God. You know, I'm not serious about it yet. And you have to understand, I'm talking kind of fast because I'm trying to compress like two years down into ten minutes. Three months after the chemo there, at the end of the, so it was an experimental treatment with the pills, so it was a longer process. And at the end of her last treatment, she went to have CAT scan done. And um, the first CAT scan they had, they had her come back and do another CAT scan because they didn't like the results. We didn't, weren't sure what it was. The next day, after the second CAT scan, the doctors were so surprised because they couldn't find any of the cancer. You know, it wasn't showing up in the, on the, in the CAT scans. That morning, now at this point I had already bought the, the trailer I have now, a little travel trailer, and I was staying at a uh, county park uh, just near my parents so I could still look in on them. Um, the next day after we found out this great news about my mother's cancer miraculously not being there anymore, I hear an owl outside my window in the morning. And I'd never heard an owl before, uh, not, not down there. I go outside and I see, look up in the tree, and here's it on the branch looking down at me is this great horned owl uh, hooting at me, or hooting. But he's looking at me, and I felt, because of the, the news of, of my mother yesterday, and I, I had been thinking about, maybe there really is a God, maybe there really is an intelligence, you know, maybe she's real, what I call her, I call her her. Um, and as I'm thinking this, and I'm seeing this owl, and I just felt so connected, it was so magical, another owl great horned owl flies and lands on the same branch. I've never seen a single great horned owl in my life. And here I'm seeing two and they're both looking down at me. A minute later, a third one flies and I managed to grab my camera and take a picture of it. It's not the best picture in the world, but I did, you know, because it was dawn. But I managed to get a picture of them and it's on my blog. And then they flew away and I never saw them again. I'm uh, later. I'm on the road. Uh, uh, I just started back on the road. I'm talking to a buddy of mine, and uh, for some reason, it pops out of my. His name is Jim, and uh, we're talking. And for some reason, it pops out of my my mouth because he was complaining about something. He wasn't getting something. I said, "There's only one thing real in this universe, and whatever you're holding on to, that's not it." And he looked at me like, where'd that come from, you know? And then he realized I was talking about her. And so he didn't follow it up. A week later, his house burns down. All his possessions were gone. He, the next, you know, he, he gathers what few things he has. He puts them in the garage. That night, the garage is broken into and everything's stolen. It was, that was another weird, weird, weird coincidence. A couple weeks later, he calls me up. He says, I'm going to do the, the nomad thing. And he's going to, he decided he's going to get a uh, Winnebago Via, which is a very rare uh, Class A, small Class A uh, RV. But there aren't many of them. I've never seen one in my life until I looked it up on the website. But he says, I'm going to get one of these, and I'm going to tow a Jeep behind it. I think that's what I'm going to do. Two days later, I'm camped up there in Alabama in this campground. There's no one at Like right now, there's, I'm the only person in this whole campground where I'm at in Louisiana because it's the winter. No one else is in there. There's a couple people in, but there's plenty of plenty of open campsites. Two days after I hear this, 
Winnebago, Winnebago Via pulls into the campsite right next to mine. There's plenty of spots, but it pulls in right next to mine. And it's towing a Jeep. All of this implies there's something going on. It implies that there's an intelligence that manipulates the world. And since waking up, this happens every day. It happens all the time. Those are the big ones, but little things happen all the time. And you hear this from spiritual seekers the world over. The more serious they get about it, the more synchronicity, the more magic happens in their lives. What I've done, what I do is I look at this and I say, well, how can this be explained? How can this all happen without an intelligence behind it? Like I said, when I first woke up, I, I really had no opinion either way on it. it. I didn't experience these things enough. It was the typical emptiness, fullness type feeling. But more and more and more, I see her. I see this participation in my life by a omnipotent force. I call it her. You might call it God. And I can't deny it anymore. And I couldn't deny it. And that's why I've become more and more mystical in what I talk about. And I say it all the time. The less there is of me, the more there is of her. It's, it's an equal proportion. It's all one thing. But the less you feel that you are of yourself, the more she participates in your life. The less there is of you, the more there is of her. It's as simple as that.